I think it's safe to say that these days, whenever you get an update for any electronic device, there isn't really much in them, usually except for the occasional bug fixes. This can also be true when it comes to drones. However, DJI has blessed us with Christmas in September by bringing us a feature packed update for the Mavic 3 series. This update adds some very, very useful features that I can see myself using out in the field. And today we are going to go over each and every one of them as in depth as I possibly can. Before we start, you'll want to make sure that your controller of choice and drone are updated. In my case, I'm using the DJI RC and the updated firmware version is V01.03.0500. You can see here that the update dictates that it just fixed some minor bugs. And although that seems very less interesting, I can say that the bugs that have been fixed is in regards to the speed issues for the most part. I now find that this controller lags way less than it did on previous firmware and in some cases matches the speed of the DJI RC2 as I mentioned and talked about in my comparison between the RC and RC2. For the Mavic 3 or whichever version of it you're using, the update version should or might be V01.00.1200. Once both the update for your controller as well as the drone is done, then you're ready to test out these features. Since mine is actually done, let's go ahead and dig into all of the features you see here on screen in this update. The first feature we're going to be taking a look at is Vision Assist. Vision Assist allows you to view the feed of the obstacle avoidance sensors on the drone, which can allow for enhanced awareness and more efficient positioning of your drone relative to other objects. This can be accessed by heading over to the map icon on the bottom left of your screen and swiping in the middle of it either to the left or right until you get what looks like a CCTV screen. From here, you can either leave the map in its small view or tap on the maximize screen button over to the top right of this small box and doing so will allow you to see the left camera initially or whichever way your drone was facing and you can change which camera to view by tapping on these directional buttons seen here on the screen. Pressing and holding any one of the directional markers will lock your view in place with that specific direction. If you want to switch to another camera, then simply tap the direction you want to look out of. The reason pressing and holding the camera you want to look out of is important is because by default, when you move the drone, it will switch to the appropriate camera so that you can see in the direction the drone is going in. For those that might be curious about this, if you happen to move the joystick in a direction that would facilitate two or more movements, the camera will point in the relative direction automatically. What's also nice about being in this view is the fact that there is an indicator in the middle of the screen in the form of a small circle that will produce a line that protrudes from it to show you the direction the drone is going in at the time. I can see this feature being extremely useful, especially because I've been trying to produce a long exposure tutorial that I've had in the works for a while. And this will actually allow me to gauge how far I am from an object when putting the drone somewhere that makes it hard for me to receive or perceive rather how close it is to an object while I am trying to take these long exposure pictures. The next feature in this update is AR home point. This isn't by any means as advanced as the vision assist feature, but it's nonetheless helpful as heck. In a nutshell, this feature puts a yellow home point icon that moves based on where the last home point is, allowing you to have a bit more precision when manually controlling your drone to come back to you. I guess you could really call it a glorified marker, of sorts, but I can see this being useful for nighttime operations where if you didn't have some kind of light to indicate your position or maybe that light blew out, then you'd just be able to use the controller to assist in getting your drone back to you. Next up is AR return to home point, and this is actually a really interesting one. Now, normally when you hit the return to home button on your controller, your Mavic 3 sets up an automated route to come back to you. Typically, this gives you a relative idea of the path your drone would take back to you, but what AR Return to Home Point does is take it up a notch. 
What this feature does is it puts a sort of opaque thick green line on screen that also shows a direction indicator going through that line to indicate the direction your drone is going in to get back to you. This allows you to visually see if your drone might misjudge or hit something based on its path and whether or not to go ahead and hit the pause button and return it to home yourself or let it do its thing and trust in the technology to do what it's designed to do. This is for sure going to be useful, a very useful feature for beginners, especially since there are things that can trip up a drone's sensors, even when doing an automated process like this. The next feature is called AR Aircraft Shadow, and this one is actually one of my favorites because it allows you to align the landing position of your drone more precisely than just relying on the camera itself. You can see here in my example that I've set up my landing pad, which I like to use once every like two months. And what I was able to do here is align the AR shadow with the circle on the landing point pad. Of course, this is not an exact science. The drone can definitely drift while going to land, but if you practice enough with this feature and understand how the drone might move when landing it on to something other than your hand, then I can see this feature being pretty darn useful. Now, just in case you want to turn off all this AR goodness, you can actually do so by going into the settings, going to safety, AR settings, and then here you can actually toggle whichever one of these features you want to turn off. The second to last feature is what's called vision positioning and obstacle sensing, which is a really, really fancy way to say, turn off all the obstacle avoidance sensors. To access this feature, you'll need to be in the camera view for your drone, tap on the menu button in the top right corner of the screen, make sure that you're already on the safety tab, scroll all the way to the bottom of the list and go into advanced safety settings, then scroll down a bit more till you find vision positioning and obstacle sensing. Using this toggle switch here, you can completely turn off every single obstacle avoidance, even the downward facing sensors. I can see this being useful for something like a time when you're on a boat and you need to land the drone, but the downward facing sensor is hesitating for a moment like they're designed to do. With this feature disabled, your drone will essentially come down as fast as you hold down on the joystick and in accordance with the mode settings you have. Now, I would say that it's extremely important to remember that this feature has been disabled because if you keep it off and use your drone like you normally would before it was available, you risk crashing your drone by bringing it down because your drone will no longer hesitate. It'll just literally fly right into the ground if you floor those sticks. As far as you pull your joystick down, as fast as the mode you have the drone in, and also as fast as you set the drone to move in the descended position is how fast you'll have to make sure you understand it will move in order to catch it. Some other things to be aware of with this feature is when you're flying over water, since typically those obstacle avoidance sensors are supposed to be able to see water below it. But now in this case, if you were to not set your descent speed and braking behavior, then your drone can and will become a submarine without you expecting it. The same example can be given if you're trying to fly low to the ground. The last feature in this update is frame guides, and this is actually available in the Mini 3 Pro also, even though I know we're talking about the Mavic 3, I uh, just wanted to put that out there. This one has a bit less utility in my opinion, but what it does is show you what different aspect ratios would look like based on the format you're filming in. This can definitely be useful, but I think personally it's utilized a little weirdly. You can see here that based on the option I select, it puts a bracket around what's on the screen here, helping me to frame the content for that specific aspect ratio. The reason it gets a little weird for me is because this does not affect the overall video clip in any way, shape or form. No matter which frame guide aspect ratio you pick, you're still going to get the regular 16 by nine clip in your album. 
So you'll have to potentially do a screen recording to see exactly what you were trying to film or get within that selected aspect ratio. This seems to be DJI's answer to not having a rotating camera on the Mavic 3 like you'd normally get with something like the Mini 3 or Mini 3 Pro. And just to make sure I'm very clear on this, no, the camera on the Mavic 3 is not physically rotating at all to give you vertical footage. You're just using the frame guide to gauge the kind of aspect ratio you want and then you'll have to do some work later to cut that specific frame out, which I guess now that I've said that out loud does make sense when you port your clip into a video editor. I can't say that I'll be using this feature much personally, but I definitely do appreciate DJI for trying to add features to the Mavic 3 series. And this feature actually further cements my belief that the Mavic 3 series is not just a particular product, but more so a platform, and most likely the reason we wouldn't see something like a Mavic 4 anytime soon. Alrighty, so that is all I have for all of you on this glorious new Mavic 3 update. And really, this update really just kind of like breathes life back into the Mavic 3, for me at least. I usually don't fly my Mavic 3 unless I'm doing something and I want to get like the best image quality. It's kind of like having a luxury car for me, so I'm usually flying my Mini 3 Pro. But this has made me want to go out and fly it even more and stop babying it so I don't, you know, have anything happen to it. Not that... Obviously, I would have something happen to it. I mean, I'm pretty careful, very, very careful with my drones. But anyway, let me know what your favorite feature is, if any. And let me know also how you'll be using these when you do go out to fly your drone. I'm definitely interested to hear. But other than that, wherever you are in the world, have a great day, a great afternoon, a great evening or a great night, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching as always.